One of the very clear trends in education is an increase in interest on the part of parents, educators, and policymakers in things like growth mindset, grit, self-control, gratitude, curiosity, and really a long list of things that have been called variously character, uh, social and emotional learning skills, non-cognitive traits, soft skills, you know, the list goes on, but I think what unifies these very diverse competencies is that they are not the same thing as IQ. We, David and I, feel that this renewed interest, really, in all the things that make a child capable uh, and, um, and promote well-being in school and beyond, this is a wonderful trend, uh, but we also are concerned that the enthusiasm for understanding these attitudes and competencies is getting policymakers and getting you know, superintendents and state level administrators kind of ahead of where the research is in terms of measuring uh, these things. And so um, while measures that have been developed for research purposes can serve those purposes well, they are all very imperfect and imperfect in their own ways. And so um, we felt, David and I, that this would be a very timely point in the trends that we see to kind of sound a cautionary note, particularly for those who are less familiar with um, measurement, but really for all of us. Adapting and using those measures to, for instance, decide whether a program is working for a school or not, to decide um, how to uh, promote or hire or fire teachers or principals or staff, how to diagnose uh, a kid as either having or not having a certain quality, or how an institution can, can continually improve their practice and improve their outcomes. Those are different uses than what the measures were developed for. It doesn't mean that in no case that the measures will be useful for those other purposes, but we thought that the field uh, in, in ourselves, uh, we psychologists uh, could use greater clarity about how measures developed for a very good research purpose may not always translate into these very important educational purposes. The most novel empirical argument that we advance in the paper concerns reference bias, which is the concern that if a kid is in a context where there's a low standard for the quality that they're self-reporting on, then kids will overrate the presence or the use of some quality or standard. And the paradox is that the more you teach that very quality, the higher the standard that kids get and the lower they rate themselves on standard measures, regret, self-control, and perseverance. And so the very success that you have as an institution, as a context, as a program, will produce a pattern of data if you're only relying on self-reports that looks like you failed. And uh, so this has tremendous implications for accountability judgments between schools especially, but also for program evaluation. If you implement a program and it gets kids to work very, very hard and to really work on their flaws and use deliberate practice, they might lower their, their self-reports on all of these perseverance measures. This is just a, a basic truth about a large set of measures that are increasingly being used with, in high-stakes education policy decisions. And we think that's extremely problematic if people aren't attuned to this concern. One of the things that I learned in reviewing the literature so carefully, the literature on measurement, both old and new, is that really the right question about is this questionnaire valid, is the marshmallow task valid, it's not just uh, a statistical question that relates to how that measure relates to other kinds of measures and outcomes. It's a question of valid for what purpose? Are those measures designed to do what you need them to do? For example, if the marshmallow test is valid when students don't think it's being used to, you know, determine their life outcomes, that's one thing. If it is presented in that way or understood in that way or used in that way, the validity is in question there really is no perfect measure. I mean, there is no thermometer for character or any aspect uh, of character. Um, any of the measures that are available are going to have you know, some signal and a lot of noise. Um, some of that noise is random, uh, but some of that noise is systematic bias in one direction or another. And so for many end uses of 
what are being called non-cognitive character or social emotional learning measures. For many of these end uses, our advice is simply not yet. Um, at the same time, we want to be encouraging of both practitioners and researchers to invest in, in more measurement development. We do believe that measurement is one of the number one priorities that we should have as an educational community, but we also don't want to pretend that the measures that we have today are everything they need to be. The fact that a measure is flawed now does not mean that it's impossible to make it an improved measure. <clears throat> so what we've tried to do is to provide a scientific list of what are the are the specific sources of problems that with the measures that raise problems with the inferences that we use. And if you think of it in in that way, then there's a smaller subset of problems that some of which can be solved in the very medium term with a little bit better engineering. And we think that especially performance tasks are ripe for thoughtful software and design and psychological experts um, to develop, for instance, a suite of um, performance tasks that could, uh, that could overcome many of the concerns about reference bias, that can produce apples-to-apples -apples measures across settings and over time. And that's a very achievable goal. While we're discouraging of some uses of existing measures right now for high-stakes outcomes where we try to outline the very specific ways that they could be improved um, so that people can be more thoughtful in program evaluation, accountability if they want it, student diagnosis, and then finally program improvement.